All right, so now that we have a basic understanding of how FM synthesis works, uh, let's look at how the Digitone structure is set up and create a new project so then we can start creating our own sounds. So, looking at the Digitone, we have some buttons over here that will help us access some useful functions. The main one I'm concerned with right now is this gear. I'm gonna press this gear here, and this gear takes me to the settings, and we can see the top option is project. When we look at the Digitone and the structure of it, the hierarchy of it, the project is basically the top level of the hierarchy, and everything is contained within a project. Within a project, we have our patterns, uh, we have pattern banks, we have our sounds. Your sounds are basically uh, any instrument that you load, as well as all the parameter settings that you set here. Uh, so you can have four different sounds that are stored. Uh, the sounds are linked to the individual patterns, so as you go from pattern to pattern, they can all have different sounds available. So again, all this is stored within a project. Now when you first load the Digitone, you're gonna be presented with the Presets project. The Presets project has a bunch of different patterns that you can try out, uh, preset sounds that you can look at and try to reverse engineer, so all that's great, but I want to be able to start from scratch and talk more about the synthesis method here and how we can use it to make our own stuff. So, in the Settings menu, I'm gonna select Project and hit Yes. Here we have Load Project, Save Project As, and Manage Projects. Now if I hit the Load Project button, we're going to see we have the Presets project here, and then I have a project that I made called Take Two. On your Presets project, more than likely there is a lock there, and the lock is there so that you can't accidentally uh, erase or overwrite or basically just change the Presets project. If for some reason you want to be able to do that, all you have to do, let me back out of here and press No, is go to Manage Projects. And here we can see we have the same projects list, but now there's a line on the right side with an arrow. If I press the right button, now I have the option to either clear the project that's selected, uh, delete it, rename it, I can load from it, save to it, or I can toggle the lock on and off. So again, if you want to unlock the presets project, that's all you have to select, and then you can toggle that lock off. I've already done this, so I'm not too worried about it. My main concern is that I want to create a new project. So I can do that in either the Manage Projects menu or in the Load Project menu. If I go to Load Project, I have the option to create a new project here. I'll press yes. Save the presets. Yeah, why not? All right, so the project has been initialized, but I didn't get a chance to name the project. This is why I generally like to use Manage Projects in order to create a new project. I'm going to press yes here. I'm going to go here and... Now, if I initialize a new project from the Manage Projects option, I have the option to name it, which will be nice. So let's go ahead and name this, and we'll call this uh, Tut. <laughs> that way I know that it's a tutorial project. All right, so we got this here, we're all good. I press no. All right, so now I want to load this project. All right, so. Now, I have a blank project here. With this blank project now, I have four blank tracks that all have the default sound setting. And that's basically where I started from in the last video just to explain some basic FM synthesis concepts. So we're starting off with a sine wave uh, on every single track. And again, the reason why is because as we look at the Synth1 page, we have the first algorithm that is selected, in the first algorithm, we can see C, the lowest operator, that is our carrier. C is generating a sine wave. We see in the harmonics box, that is the shape of the waveform being generated by C. Above C, we have A. A is a modulator, but if I go to synth page two, A is turned all the way down, so we don't hear any modulation. The frequency of C is not being affected by A. We can also see that the B operators are turned down, so we're not hearing that at all. If I look at the mix parameter here, the mix is all the way towards X, so all I'm hearing is the output of this first vertical column. So there you go. Now in the last video, we looked at how we can use the modulators to modulate the frequency of the carrier. Uh, and that way we can change the timbre, change the tonal quality of the sound being generated. What we didn't look at is how we can adjust the coarse tuning of the different modulators, as well as the carrier, all the different operators. By adjusting the coarse tuning, we're essentially changing the harmonics that are being generated uh, by these different waveforms. And when you use these in combination as modulators and carriers, the sound possibilities are nearly limitless. 
We're also going to discuss how we can use these envelopes to make it so that the modulators uh, basically change volume over time, which can make these sounds evolve in some unique ways. So let's dive a little bit deeper into synthesis and start making some sounds from scratch. <laughs> 